Mild-mannered Ronald Dominique was overweight with a heart condition and a cane. He moonlit as a bad Patti LaBelle impersonator at a local gay club and murdered dozens of homeless men. In late 1997, police in the southern parishes of Louisiana began to find bodies, bodies that had been raped and tortured before they were murdered. For the next nine years, Louisiana police found these bodies scattered along roadsides, floating in bayous, rotting in sugarcane fields, and half buried in ditches. All the bodies were men, mostly homeless, and they became known as the victims of the Bayou Serial Killer, a madman who lured men of a certain lifestyle into his trap and almost got away with it. As a young boy from Thibodeau, Louisiana, Ronald reportedly didn't show any signs of the sociopath that would develop later in his life. Though he lived in a small, run-down trailer park, Dominic was active in school and spent his free time singing in the choir and performing with his school's glee club. He was known in Thibodeau for his generosity and was often seen helping the residents of his community with yard work or groceries. Under his confident, kind air, Ronald's emotions were at war. Though he never openly admitted to being gay, he spent his nights in drag, moonlighting as a Patti LaBelle impersonator at a local gay bar. Unlike the residents of his little trailer park, the locals at the gay bar saw Ronald as an off-putting and uncomfortable character. Perhaps due to his inability to fit into a worldly admired, Ronald began to lose touch with his friendlier exterior. In 1985, he was arrested for telephone harassment and fined $75. A few years later, he was arrested for speeding and driving while intoxicated and again ordered to pay a fine. In the years before his killing streak, Ronald would ultimately be arrested and charged no less than seven times. Police would later come to regret having ever let him go. Despite those run-ins with the law, Ronald Dominic continued to live in his trailer park community with little to no issue. In fact, the community hardly noticed him at all. After all, he did appear harmless. He was a soft, overweight man, stood at just five foot five, lived with his sister, walked with a cane. What was the worst he could do? Whether Dominique's meek demeanor was merely a ruse to cover up his sadist insides, he was nonetheless capable of horrific acts, even before he would commit some of his most heinous could almost be locked up. In August of 1996, shortly after his DUI arrest, Dominique was arrested and charged with forcible rape. He had allegedly coerced a man into coming home with him and attempted to tie him up. When the man refused, Dominique became violent. Witnesses claimed they saw a half-dressed man escape through an open window that same night. But when Dominique was arrested and brought to trial, the victim was nowhere to be found to testify against him. Ultimately, the case was dropped, and Ronald determined he could never go back to jail. He would later say that was why he had to kill his victims instead of getting caught. Shortly after this trial ended, Dominique killed his first victim, 19-year-old David Mitchell. As he had once before... Ronald talked young David into coming home with him. He tied him up too, but this time succeeded in both raping and murdering his victim. Dominique then dragged the body out to his sugarcane field and left it there. With the rape and murder of David Mitchell, Ronald Dominique began a nine-year killing spree. Not once during his spree was Ronald Dominique a suspect of his own crimes. The Louisiana State Police launched a task force of sheriffs from nine parishes shortly after the death of Mitchell in 1997. Later, the Federal Bureau of Investigation would be looped in as the body count increased. According to the special agent in charge, 
FBI profilers at the same time considered Dominique's case the most significant in terms of the number of victims he had acquired in such a short period of time. It became clear, too, that Ronald had a type. He targeted mostly homeless men between 18 and 40, or social outcasts he felt no one would miss. Most of these men he picked up at gay bars or off the streets where they stood at night prowling for Johns. Others he would show photos of an attractive woman and boast that she was his wife, and that the men could come back to his house and have sex with her even though Dominic wasn't married. Many did accompany Dominique back to his home, but not one of them considered him a threat. Once at his home, the mild-mannered nobody flipped a switch and turned sadistic. He'd tie up his victims and rape them, and in most cases, kill them. Ronald told police during his arrest that if the men refused to be tied up, he would let them go unharmed. By this claim, some 23 men then would have consented to being tied up in a stranger's home. Regardless, his decision to let one man go would spell the end to his terror streak at last. Almost 10 years after his fateful first murder, one of the men Ronald allowed to go free, an ex-con living in a homeless shelter, mentioned his close call to his parole officer. He told the officer how he'd been tied up by an older man who had appeared ill, and something clicked within the officer. Within a short period of time, police had arrested Ronald Dominique.